All right, so in this video, we're gonna be using Premiere to build these advanced time slice tutorials where we're gonna have different shapes like circles, triangles, squares, and we're even gonna be able to rotate them. In Premiere, we're gonna build this in such a way where all you have to do is insert your footage, change the time, and you're ready to export it. All right, so let's get started. I wanna make a new sequence, Command N, or you can just come down into File, New and Sequence. I'm just gonna do a 4K template. So it is 3840 by 2160. Let's just call it Diamond Time Slice. We got our sequence. Now we need some dummy footage. I have this Taipei 101. 4K time lapse. I'm going to keep the existing settings. The only thing I want to do here is change the time. Command R is your keyboard shortcut. You can also just double click, go to speed duration, and just dial this right into 10 seconds. And you can choose different speeds. I like 10 seconds because it's just easier to keep track of. Now we're just going to nest that. Double click, go ahead and nest, or you can use a keyboard shortcut. Let's just name this diamond time slice input footage. So eventually once this is all done, this will be where we input our footage and we're ready to export. We're gonna reverse the clip. We can do that really easily by just pressing option and just dragging this over here. We can delete any space. Again, right click or use your keyboard shortcut command R to reverse the speed. Now I just need to duplicate it because if I were to do this, there wouldn't be a perfect loop. So I'm gonna press option and duplicate this one more time. Close the gaps. Now I'm gonna grab all of my time lapses. I'm gonna press command G, which is my keyboard shortcut for nesting. And I'm going to name this diamond time slice layer. And it's 40 seconds, that's important to know. It's easy to do the math because I got four 10 second clips. So now over here in our timeline, I'm just going to go ahead and make this a new folder just to keep things organized. And I'll name it Diamond Time Slice. Now I need to add the shape. So to create the shape, we're just gonna create a new sequence. We're gonna go Command N, and I'm going to make the settings as 8,000 by 8,000. And it's important that the shape is bigger because it's easier and better to scale things down than it is to try to scale things up. You're just gonna lose quality. So let's just go ahead and call this square. Another reason why I built it in 8K by 8K is so that way it's a perfect square. If you go into graphics and you just add a new rectangle, you'll see it's really difficult to make a perfect square. It's because this program isn't meant for doing all of these different shapes. You would really wanna use After Effects or Photoshop or Illustrator if you wanted to do that. This is the easiest way I've found. First, I'm gonna dial my motion, my position. I'm gonna to go to zero and zero. I'm just gonna zero that out. If you try to come in here and just drag it out, you'll notice this box will eventually get full. So what you wanna do is just scale this up until it fits the full frame. And the reason why I did it in this video motion, that's important, instead of in one of these other parameters, is because now, if I wanted to make a triangle, I could just come in and adjust my rotation, and now I have a perfect right angle triangle. So that's how you would also build a triangle. If you wanted to build a circle, you would just click on the opacity and you'll get this ellipse tool. And here's the painful part. You have to kind of eyeball it and just really get finicky with it. And it's pretty clumsy again, because this isn't necessarily the best software. If you do have Photoshop or Illustrator or After Effects, you could make your shapes in there, export them out as PNG or like a PSD document and then you could just import all of your clips. So that's how you make a circle, a square, and even a triangle. All right, so now what I wanna do is my diamond time slice layer is 40 seconds. I wanna make sure this one's 40 seconds. So I'm gonna come in here to my time, go to my zero, dial in four for 40, and boom, stretch this out. I'll close that. And now I'm going to add the square layer on top of here. And I'll delete the sound, we don't need it. Both of these are green. I wanna double click on here, go to my label, and just change the color to anything but green. Now I'm gonna select the layer, come into my scale properties, and first I'm just gonna rotate rotate this 45 degrees so we have like that diamond shape scale this down and I want it to just fill the entirety of the frame perfect so now I'm going to duplicate this quite a few times and I want to double click in this area and click add tracks I think maybe I'll add maybe what 25 tracks I'm not quite sure and now what I want to do is I am, I'm all zeroed out at the timeline I'm just gonna nudge over six frames that's how much my time slice is gonna be but you could do four frames ten frames however many you want I'm gonna do six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just tapping on the arrow and I'm gonna zoom in with the plus button. And then I will press option and grab my square and line it up. 
whoops, and now I'm just going to scale this down. And one thing I might have forgot to mention, we want to put a layer of drop shadow. So I'm going to select both of these square layers. I'm going to come into my effects and type in drop shadow, and I'm just going to enable that effect. And what that does is it allows me to see the borders of the white edge. So that looks good. Again, move over six frames. I'm at the 12 second now. Press option, bring it up, scale this down. One, two, three, that looks, that looks good. You can make these slices as big or as little as you want. I'm just gonna repeat that six frames, bring it over, scale it down. One, two, three, four. Perfect, that looks good. I like that. And I'm just gonna keep repeating that. It's really that simple. It just takes a little bit of time. We'll speed up through this. Once we're done, we can just go down to the bottom of our sequence and go to the very beginning of our first layer. And what we wanna do is add a new effect called track mat, and we're going to apply it onto our diamond slide time slice layer. And it gives us this option, mat alpha is exactly what we want. We're gonna use the white slice of the layer to cut out our time lapse. Kind of like, just like a mask, to be honest. So we'll go to mat, click none, and it gives us all of these channels. And we're gonna choose the very bottom one. And for this technique, the nice thing about Premiere is it'll always be the most bottom layer that we'll wanna use. So I'll drag this over, select the layer, drag down to video four. Option, lift it up, select the mat, and repeat this all the way through the layers. All right, so that is what it looks like there at the end. We've pretty much finished it up. Now we just want to make it a perfect loop. So what we can do is we can put our playhead right here and we know, okay, three seconds, perfect. What we're gonna do is now select all of these layers. So I just press Command A to select all the layers and we're gonna nest them. So right click, nest, and now let's go to diamond time slice export. So we're already here at the end at the right time. So we can just go ahead and ripple delete backwards. If you're not familiar with that, just press C, cut the tool and go ahead and delete it. We can delete this space as well. And if we remember, we have a 10 second clip and we wanna see it two times. So now all I need to do is just come in to the 20 second marker and I can ripple delete forward or again, just press C for my cut tool, V to go back to my arrow, my, my selecting tool and delete this press O for my out arrow and we're ready to export. And so that's how we created a looping diamond because it's 20 seconds, so it's just gonna begin and end in the same way. Now, what if we want to create a rotation? So let's go back into our build. So I'm just double clicking on this layer. And again, we would do it very similarly. We'd go to the last square layer that got entered again. We don't wanna do it here, because you won't see all of these slices. So we go to the very last layer and we would just simply come in here and go to rotation. And then we would come to this layer, also click on our rotation. Come to here and do rotation. And we would do that for every single one of them. All right, so we made it to the very last one. Now I just want to go, since I want it to be a perfect loop, I'm gonna go to the 23 second marker. So just add a two, press tab. It took me to the right spot. And now I'm just gonna go to my calculator real quick because I don't trust myself. Add 360 to 45, which I believe is 405, but there. I'm just gonna copy that, come in here and paste it. And now I'm just going to do that to every single one. And that's how you would build the rotation effect. And so lastly, let me just do a little bit of housekeeping. We'll go into this diamond. And let's go ahead and say all of these layers should be in their own little bin. So these are all in their own bin. And now what happens is when you come and twirl this down, you can go to your time and diamond time slice input footage and you just input whatever footage you want. And then once it's done, you go to your diamond time slice export and you go ahead and export it. And it's, it's really that easy. Now, let me show you one thing that I have noticed and I think it's a bug with Premiere. Sometimes if we were to come in here and bring in a new footage and speed it up, bring it to 10 seconds, and then go into our export, everything will look fine. But if we go into like this layer, parts of it are black. So if this ever happens, just double click on it, double click on the time slice layer again. And for some reason, some glitch is happening where these aren't registering. No problem, just delete them option, drag them. You can do them both at the same time. Press Command R for speed reverse, time reverse and reverse the speed. And now when you go to your 
export, everything's fine. I don't know, understand why that's happening. All right, and that's how you build a custom time slice template. As promised, all of these templates are available to you and you can just start inputting your own time lapses into them and exporting them. And if you do, share them with me on Instagram. I'm at it's Scott Herder. If you like this video or you have any other requests on what you'd like to learn with time-lapse photography, please let me know. And please, if you found this helpful, saved you any time, please hit that subscribe button, sign up for those notifications, and happy shooting. I'll see you next time.